And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. We're moving now into our first segment for the morning. This uh, topic is definitely one you want to listen up to. This is all about the Domestic Violence Unit of the Belize Police Department. Primarily, it's a unit that we need. We, we need every day. We hear about all these uh, violence that would occur uh, between both sexes. But we might not know how to make a report, why to make a report, how, what to do to make a report, and where to go to make that report. But we've got the professionals in to tell us exactly what to, where to, and how to. In with us is ASP Marta Rees. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Commanding uh, Domestic Violence Unit. And also ASP Fitzroy Yearwood, Director of Media Communications for the Belize Police Department. No stranger to the media. Guys, yeah. good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Thank you. Good morning. So... Domestic violence is, is a very, very sensitive issue, and it's one that continues to ravage the Belizean society day in, day out. Um, and we know that the police department is one of the first to respond to cases of domestic violence, or it is the first agency of the government where individuals who are victims of domestic violence will seek, to seek some type of assistance or make a report. Speak to us about um, the domestic violence unit and what the mission is of that unit, and uh, we can navigate the conversation from here. Okay, good morning again. Um, where the domestic violence unit is concerned, we respond to all incidents of domestic violence that are reported to the police. Um, that is either through our 911 hotline, we have a domestic violence unit hotline in Belize City, Nonetheless, we can um, always pass on whatever information is given to that line to the districts as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes um, immediate family within the household. Mm -hmm. And in Belize City, we extend to, familial, to family. As mm -hmm. long as you're blood related, mm -hmm. we would deal with the matter. Mm -hmm. And we respond to all incidents, even if it is not reported by the persons themselves. Mm -hmm. And we try to act as best as possible on those information and try to convince those persons as well to make a report. Yeah. Um, primarily, um, because we know that there will be a lot of people who want to know um, what to do, how to do, when to do. But primarily, some folks might not even understand what domestic violence is. We've seen a lot of stuff in the news. We've seen everything from tit to tat. But it might be happening to some people and they don't know they feel maybe it's physical and being and being dealt mm. with physically when in reality that it's more than just that so mm, let's yes. do, let's define what domestic violence is yes um domestic violence is any act it's physical emotional verbal um psychological and can also extend to financial as well mm -hmm. right because we know um in many instances we have where the male is the only breadwinner in the home. Mm -hmm. And I will not be, I'll be impartial because then we have also seen where times are changing. Yeah. And then we have some where the females, females are the breadwinner, are the breadwinner. breadwinner in, in the home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know statistically, yes, 85% would be more females who experience domestic violence, but we also have males who, ex who experience domestic violence as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when it comes to the um, verbal, you know, the name calling, um, telling them they're worthless and all of that verbal. Psychologically, it can also affect a person because not because you're not being harmed physically, you can be affected emotionally. Okay. I mean, abandoning the person, um, maybe not caring for their needs that can affect a person emotionally. Mm. Indirect threats, not necessarily saying anything, but the things that you do. Mm -hmm. um, emotionally, you're in a house, you slam a door, you know, up being upset and it's a continuous behavior. All of those can be domestic violence. Mm. So for statistics, yeah. um, how many, uh, you know, uh, I'm skeptical about asking the question, but I know that this <laughs> media, this forum is definitely one too. How many uh, domestic violence report would you say that we get in a day in our country, in Belize? In a day? Okay. If we would calculate um, an average of 100 for the month, 
you divide that by the 30 days, you get at least three or four reports per day. Man. Yeah. You know, um, there, there is a stigma as it um, pertains to the, the police department and how they respond to domestic violence cases, but that's because we are not aware as a society what the police department has been doing in terms of domestic violence, um, in terms of the domestic, the domestic violence unit. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is also a community of us who would say um, victims are afraid or do not feel um, that they could approach the police department because there is a lack of confidentiality that we have seen from time to time in terms of um, the release of reports being publicized um, without consent of the person who goes in to make a report. And we've seen that in the situation with the former leader of the opposition when the, the victim went in, she made a report and that was released to the public. Um, how is it that the Belize Police Department is addressing what the community would see as an act of public service unprofessionalism in terms of the confidentiality of victims who come in to report those cases? Well, um, you put it in such context, it's more than um, improper. When a report comes to us and the persons not related to the domestic violence unit mm -hmm. would make it their business to make that report public. We at the police department media relations don't, we, we know the protocol when it comes to domestic violence, um, sexually related reports. We, for, we try our best to conceal mm -hmm. the identity of the victim. Mm -hmm. And when we find, um, like in that case that you mentioned, would occur, we leave no stones unturned to try to find out who would do something like that that would be disturbing, not only to the public, but to us that work in this profession yeah. and take this as our career. Yeah. If you lose the integrity of your department it's hard for you to regain that trust yeah factual and uh, i can tell you from personally working with miss reese mm -hmm. and other persons at the domestic violence unit the people that are there are very professional mm -hmm. i ran a joke with her yesterday i told her she is better than the call centers so you ask me why? I tell you, you have a low turn turnover rate. So <laughs> while we take it as humor, mm -hmm. in order for you to get people to work in certain positions, it's yeah. a development of trust yeah. over the years. Yeah. And I can tell you that I hardly ever see anyone being transferred from domestic violence unit. I am not going to swear for everyone there. But I can tell you that we have established that that leak didn't come from DVU itself. Okay. Sadly, it was leaked because I personally did not release Made that information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one in my office released it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very disturbing. Mm. Though I don't care who the, the victim or the or, accused yeah. is. I treat every case with the same respect that I treat a regular case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I say a regular case, people might say, oh, it's the farmer, um, people of stature. Leader. Yeah. 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 And then they would expect certain privilege to be levied that way. We do not do that. Yeah. We give everybody the same privilege yeah. and we treat everyone with the same respect. All right. So, let, so let's talk about uh, making this report. Um, I'm a victim of domestic violence, or at least so I feel. And I want to be vocal about it, and I need to go to the police department. Yeah. I'm in Punta Gorda, I'm in Corozal, San Pedro, it doesn't matter. What do I do? Okay. 
Um, well, when you want to make the report, um, it is, like I said, calling um, because we respond on the ground as well as at the station. So it, it does not necessarily mean that if you do not come to the station that something will not be documented that you made a report. Mm -hmm. Because we often have cases where we respond and we go on site and we will get all the information, find out what is happening mm -hmm. and try to find a solution there mm -hmm. and the persons do not follow up and come into the station mm -hmm. to give a formal report, something that is documented, a statement taking and, right. sign and they sign to it. Mm -hmm. um, but all of those information are entered in the um, system because it is not just about arresting and charge, we're also there to guide them yeah. as to ho how, how to go about mm -hmm. um, finding assistance because some don't necessarily want um, an arrest to be made. Of course, we know when it comes to domestic violence, all the victim wants it to do is to stop. Mm -hmm. And if that would mean wanting the person to change, because we do know people can change. Yeah. Um, we've had yeah. many incidents that are a one-time incident and we've not um, dealt with the persons again, and we've not heard anything coming out of it, mm -hmm. right? So um, they go to the state, they can either call, the police will respond, or they can come to the station and make the report. Okay. We advise them on um, the court process, um, if it is that they want orders, and they don't want um, to have the matter um, go to the magistrate court mm -hmm. for us to arrest and charge. And we also guide them on what assistance there is that is given either by women's department mm -hmm. or, and women's department is not just about women, it's about women and families. Mm. Yeah. So it's not just strictly based on women, it's also for the family as a whole. Yeah. And um, so that includes the men as well, right? And um, we guide them on human, the human services department because although we have the Ministry of Human development and, infra and indigenous persons, mm -hmm. it, um, they have different sections. Yep. One that deals with women and family, and that's the support aspect. And then we have the human development department that deals with um, child abuse. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the community rehabilitation department that deals with rehabilitation. And we have mm -hmm. um, troubled youths and teens, and we have a lot of um, young persons um, with uncontrollable behavior. So. We guide them with all of that, um, seeking medical assistance, and we give them all that information. So it's not just about them coming in, making a report, giving a statement. We interview them, find out what happened, um, write the statement, and have them sign it. As long as some crime or offense has occurred, mm -hmm. we will arrest and charge if we have a written statement. Um, the... Um, when it comes to making the report, we also do um, mediation okay. with, if, with both parties. With both parties. Yes, yes, with both parties, if that is, if there, if that is requested. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, well, it's only Belize City, and we would like to extend it countrywide, even if, if it's just one for each region. Yeah. Um, we have a counselor mm -hmm. as well. So we've had a lot of cases where we've referred to her as well. She is in-house at the Queen Street Police Station with us. She has her own private mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. so it is not as though we know what is happening. So it's discreet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 she you has know, her own I, private I'm glad space. you've mentioned that because it seems that we're trending a bit towards some aspects of restorative justice and being able to use mediation as an alternative to be able to settle disputes. Um, but I also want to, 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 to touch on um, what the capacity building of the officers are like in terms of being able to respond to these types of uh, cases. Um, what type of training is being provided to the officers to be able to navigate such a sensitive issue? Okay, yeah, because um, we know it's not just the persons that work at the domestic violence yeah. who are the first responders. Yeah. And um, with the pandemic, we know, thank God it's over. Well, it's not over, it's but it's thank God we're, yeah. we're slowly we're going <laughs> trying to go back to some <laughs> yeah. sense of normalcy. normalcy yes. Um, well, we have continuous training, right? And it comes at, as in-service training. And we're trying to re... And we have a training support unit. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to um, continuously train everybody because it's, it's not just about the persons working at the domestic violence unit. Mm -hmm. um, I myself do training as well. Um, I try to do at least a two days, one day or two days training 
where domestic violence is concerned, especially for those first responders who are not mm -hmm. um, domestic violence officers and who are yeah. not continuously de dealing with these situations. Yeah. And I will not say that, yes, we do have some instances where maybe we get some bad, bad reports, you know, where, where officers did not respond quite adequately. And uh, as you said, capacity building, that is yeah. where training yeah. comes in and we're trying to do that. And I'm looking forward to um, preparing for trainings as well. And, we, and I think it's best that we reach countrywide and, and, uh, and we're trying to work on that. Which, which brings me uh, to, to Fitzroy again. Uh, with respect to training and, and, and whatnot, um, you did allude to the fact that when it comes to, especially cases like Brighton had mentioned, uh, it's not coming from the Belize Police Department, from your office specifically, mm -hmm. that would house these information. So how do we train these officers to uh, be discreet with, with, you know, and, and try to build trust within the public uh, so as to, uh, for them to know that, hey, your information is not going to be leaked, the police department is to be trusted? We, like um, Ms. Reese said, uh, we had a, a little break because of the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, we actually travel the public relations unit mm -hmm. And um, Ms. Reese personally, countrywide, and we try to train every officer. It's almost impossible to do that, but we just sat down and discussed again that we are going countrywide together. Because I believe, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. DVU needs uh, that extra tender love. Mm -hmm. And um, for us to support the family violence unit, we need to be on board with them mm -hmm. every step of the way. We realize that they have the bulk of the report. When you hear, you hear about other major crimes, it's not on a daily basis. But like Ms. Reese mentioned, countrywide, we face four to five reports per day when oh. it comes to family violence because family violence um, covers a broader area uh, we how to say we have to be on our P's and Q's 24 hours yeah. it's, it's even more demanding than our investigators at our crimes branch yeah. I ask her over and over if she's a magician or if she know how to <laughs> multiply people, I don't know. <laughs> because her staff is 20. Wow. That's her belief setting. Okay. The bulk of the work for Family Violence Unit happens in belief setting. I mean, this is densely populated area. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we would want to maybe increase her staff to 30. To be logical and not to try to go overboard. Mm -hmm. And we do constant recruitment. But like I said, we have to find the qualities and develop those qualities mm -hmm. in persons so that we could put them in that very delicate yeah. area to work. And um, we try to sensitize every officer on the ground. To, uh, when you respond to these things, people are emotional their tempers are up. You must operate professionally at all times. Yeah. And uh, we realize for years now, when the domestic, the person being abused in um, the home mm -hmm. is a male, that person is m more shy than when the female comes to make a report. One, because of the stigmatism, mm -hmm. they don't want to look to be looked at as, in layman terms, so. less than a man. <laughs> I won't <laughs> use that word. I know. I know and, <laughs> and then that would, that would keep them in a shell that they don't want they to, don't go want and to make come out a and formal complaint. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those are the, the more difficult reports to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because when we do get a report or get involved is when it has uh, left from that level mm -hmm. to this level of violence. Yeah. And yeah. it becomes physical at that time. 
So when you go on a scene, we always ask our officers to evaluate the situation as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Response was not to add to anybody's trauma. Mm. Yeah. For the, you know, I, 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 I've got to throw this out. There are a lot of times, though, that the same officers are actually the perpetrators of these, uh, 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 these kind of criminal activities. And uh, how is it dealt with within the force, knowing that, you know what, a police officer is going to deal with a police officer? There are many a times uh, you'd hear from um, the, the victim that, I'm not able to make this report because my spouse is actually a police officer or a law, uh, a law enforcer. And then if I go and I make this report, then the others just try to sham it off. How is it dealt with? And how do you put that trust into people's mind that I'm able to do so, even though the abuser is a police officer? Okay. I will let Martha I deal with saying. the report part, <laughs> and then I could respond as to the, the detention of that person. All right. Because I was once an EDO, an executive duty officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like you rightfully said, sometimes we have to deal with police officers, BDF, Coast Guard. The law there is law no difference in dealing with that report. Yeah. Yes. We deal with it professionally in the same manner as a regular citizen's report. But, it, but it's about, exactly. it, okay, I, I, I hear you, I hear you, but there are many a times we hear that because the person is a police officer, that person naturally have to buy. Remember, they're friends within these, within these places. And it's about building that trust. And I'll go as far as to say when it comes to dom domestic violence within a community, the community must come out to speak up about it. And I'd go as far as to tell you that I think this is one of the things that the, uh, the domestic violence uh, unit at the police department should do is to go on out and have these outreach programs whereby people should understand that, hey, if you see something, then come on out, reach out to us so we could eventually, or this is what you can do as a community. Because when the community speaks out, then eventually the chances of uh, success is even higher. Yeah. But let's get back to the question I, 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 I posed <laughs> first. Yeah. Yes, well, it is no different. Mm -hmm. Everyone is treated the same. Um, it doesn't matter your status seen at the community. Yeah. It does not matter your um, occupation. It is dealt with the same way across the board. Mm -hmm. So no one should be afraid of reporting. Because Most their spouse is a... Is a police officer. Yeah. I will say, the same way we have um, reports of bad response, because like I said, oftentimes it's not all the time that the domestic violence unit officers are the first responders on the ground. Mm -hmm. But I always tell everybody that comes to our office, and I advise my people to do the same. Mm -hmm. There is not one level of reporting in the police department. So if you have a bad experience, it does not mean that it should stop there. We have, everybody has a supervisor, has a supervisor, up to the commissioner of police, and we have the CEO, and we have the minister, so someone will take action, <laughs> yeah. right? So it, it should not be because you had a bad experience with that officer on the ground, mm -hmm. that it should stop you from making a report. Okay. Even if you have a complaint against us at the domestic violence unit office, it does not stop there. Okay. Because we as well has, have supervisors. Yeah. And um, where you have the police department, if it's a complaint against the police officer, not domestic, the domestic comes to us. Mm -hmm. But if, it's a, if it is an issue that your report was not dealt with properly, mm -hmm. we have the professional standard branch as well. And we have a supervisor, I have a supervisor, we have a district OC, mm -hmm. of course. We have right presently Mr. Howell Jalit, he's the assistant commissioner and he's in charge of this area. And any area you go to, it does not matter if it's in Belize City, if it's in Dangriga, if you did not get the assistance or you believe that your report was not dealt with properly, you have um, OCs in the district, you have deputy OCs, so you have different level of supervision within the police department. So it does not stop with that, bad, that one bad response. Yeah, you know, um, I've, been, I've been going over the statistics uh, and I just want to share quickly that from January to December 2019, 1,377 um, cases were document were documented, were, were uh, reported, but under future reference. Uh, in 2020, that was 1,525. In 2021, 
it's 1,589. As senior professionals in the police department, do you believe that at some point our legislation has to change where if reports are being made um, more than once, that it should be in the jurisdiction now of the police to be able to override whether a victim comes in and say, I want for, to press charges and go ahead and uh, press charges if it's something that's consistent? Oh, well, that is a question um, because that it, it does not just go to the laws, it goes to the Constitution, yeah. right? Where the Constitution says that um, an accuser has the right to face his, an accused has the right to face his accuser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, it goes way to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, however, we try our best um, with those persons who, um, where we have repeated reports, I mean, it's, it comes down to the person, it comes down to training, because yeah. you have to know how to convince a person that it is the best thing for them, right? right? Um, not just, it's not just about getting a conviction, it's about mm -hmm. um, making a difference. And mm -hmm. sometimes we've had incidents where we arrest and charge, and of course we have a lot of those where the, um, victim goes and then they withdraw and sometimes it's just a lesson learned and sometimes they just need um to learn that lesson that mm -hmm. it is a serious um matter and if it goes to the court you know it's documented i mean everybody has a role to play and and we do our part as best as is possible mm -hmm. in guiding them and like i said it's not all it's not a lot that we have that are repeated yeah. right and like you see from the numbers Mm -hmm. And if you look at the numbers and look at the um, matters of serious concern, mm -hmm. where we have incidents of murder, it's not, if you would say, um, yes, it's a grave situation and it's, and it's really, um, it's, it's difficult yes. to see that happen to a person and to see, but if you would look at that number, you have a thousand and five mm -hmm. reported cases. And yes, we have um, where future reference is concerned. We call it future reference, not because something was not done, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, because they might have chosen another avenue. They might have chosen to go to the court instead. Mm -hmm. um, they might have gotten some assistance, as I said, from the other yeah. departments, or they might have gone into counseling and they mm -hmm. choose not to have dealt with the matter right. through the court. That's why we have a lot of future reference. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the numbers statistically, of the future reference compared to the more serious offenses, it's a really wide margin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, um, I think it also plays into the, the psychological aspect, aspect of yes. um, abuse and the, the entire cycle of domestic violence yes. as well. Yes, um, definitely. Oftentimes you get reports and then you, for example, a victim would get a protection order, for example, yes. and two weeks into that protection order, the person goes back into the household there yes. is a repeated act and then seeks another protection yes. order yeah and so um certainly it's a it's a very sticky situation um and and now this might be an opinion that perhaps publicly might not be something that we are ready to consume or digest but i want to share it because i, I had the opportunity to speak extensively with with a magistrate mm -hmm. and uh, i was indicated to that oftentimes there are some cases that are over exaggerated Yes. And uh, these types of cases are the, the ones that are very sticky and sensitive to navigate mm -hmm. because it because of the, the, the comprehensive approach that it takes to be able to deal with the issue of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, considered, considering the domestic violence unit, um, the courts, um, mm -hmm. considering uh, the different options in terms of social services. Mm -hmm. How do you go about um, being able to decipher whether or not um, or assess the level of seriousness of cases that come, come before you. Okay. Well, like we said, it's not just taking the report. Yeah. Um, we, people might say that it's just taking the report, but we are an investigative unit as well. Okay. Right? Because we don't just get the matter and send them to court. We have to investigate the matter as well. So um, that is how we go about um, doing our assessment, doing our charges, um, because just like the criminal investigation branch mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has all those major cases and yeah. have to do in-depth investigation, we do the same as well. All right. And you said something, and I think that the family court, not because we do not have, we might have that amount of cases, but we've had 
many cases that have not even reached our office right. Yeah, right. and um, we do not have an issue mm -hmm. with those cases because where where the family court is concerned that is also a first area of reporting and yeah. a lot of persons go to the court and to get the orders because maybe they have heard from a friend from a friend mm -hmm. um, what they need to get done yeah. or maybe they ask questions for themselves not necessarily at the police department and they find out because if we look at um, working together um, to deal with domestic violence we have a lot a lot of because every order that is issued by the court we get a copy at our office and we get a copy countrywide Whichever, whichever court issues an order a copy is sent to the police that we are aware yeah. of the situation that if something should come about all right. right so it's 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 a joint effort all right well we've got to stick up in there uh <laughs> we've got to but it is a very important uh, uh topic and you know i'd like for folks to to understand that if you are in such situation make your report to the belize police department and uh they'll act upon it so I'd like to say a big thank you to ASP Marta Rees and, of course, ASP Fitzroy Yearwood. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. John, before we leave, mm -hmm. I just want to highlight to uh, the people of Belize that today is World Denim Day. Mm. And uh, we wear denim in support <laughs> of <laughs> women that have been abused. Not only women, uh, men, yeah. survivors of sexual abuse okay so today i ask you to go on our facebook page and post a picture okay mm -hmm. it simply means that we are supporting people that have been victims mm -hmm. and they have survived you can even put the words on it that you're not alone it's not your fault yeah we are here for you how can we support you yeah and we love you all the right. Ministry <laughs> of Home Affairs uh -huh. supports <laughs> World and MD. I, sure. I think I need to have a last word too. I always try to give out our numbers, mm -hmm. our hotline numbers. Yeah. We have two hotline numbers, one for smart users, one for digi, cell us for digi users. Mm -hmm. And we also have a cell phone. And, it, and uh, like I said, not because we're not, it is not countrywide does not mean that the information cannot be passed on yeah. yeah so for those digi users we have 0800 2929 for those smart users the hotline is 0800 280 9688 and the cell phone number is 672 7628 all right yeah so now you know exactly what to do it is very important that if you are in such situation whether male or female whether female or male make that call all right thank you guys once thank again for joining you. us thank world then in the at the way around jeans is us no blue <laughs> 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 but we know Fitzroy he's yeah. right there in tune with it we're going to take a break when we come back of course the conversation is going to be about the end of uh, autism awareness month and uh, we'll be talking about advocating for children with autism so stay with us will be right.